so i was watching the pitch meeting for breaking bad and there was a part in between where the writer guy explains the cool things that happened throughout the series to the producer guy i put the link in description so that you can check it out if you want but basically it went like he goes from cooking meth in a winnebago to under a laundromat that doesn't sound much better he gets a guy to say his name say his name he yells at his wife is that another cool thing you've written um it's coming out wrong but trust me it will all be super cool this made me wonder about all the other things like this not just in breaking bad but also better call saul and made me realize how great Vince Gilligan and team are at creating tension from minimal stakes for the audience and for the characters. It's not like there are absolutely no life and death situations, but they're spaced so perfectly and they feel organic and earned. But every small decision and action that the characters take along the way feel just as important. For example, let's take a scene from Better Call Saul that made me feel really anxious for Nacho. For those who haven't seen the show, it's basically a guy throwing pills into a jacket. But those who watch the show know full well how on the edge of a seat we were during this. I'd like to dissect this scene and see what makes it work so well, even though it's not a huge life or death action sequence with world-ending stakes. Ignacio Varga, referred to as Nacho, is often considered as the Jesse Pinkman equivalent in Better Call Saul. He's a good guy just trying to get by and earn some extra cash but inevitably ends up way over his head in the game. It reaches a point that he needs to kill Hector Salamanca, the baddest Salamanca of the family, to protect his father, whose business Hector wants to use as a drug mule. Now since the writers made sure to make us empathize for Nacho, we too relate to his feelings of protecting his father. This clear dichotomy of good and bad makes it easier for us to root for Nacho, even though he is trying to take someone's life. So there were two scenarios how this could have ended and both of them mean a lot in the grand scheme of things for the audience. The first one, that is if Nacho fails, we would see a likable character harmed by one of the biggest threats in the Better Call Saul universe and see his father suffer as well. Or the other one is if he succeeds and the audience gets an answer to an important question. How did Hector get in that wheelchair? This question was on the viewer's mind since Hector first appeared and seemed healthy enough. So it's either Hector winning and becoming even more of a threat or Nacho winning and us getting an important question answered along with the relief for the character and his father. This one is like the icing on the cake and I especially love the montages that Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad have to offer. In a lesser show, the fact that the audience knew that Nacho was going to switch the pills might have been enough before showing this scene, but the showrunners deliberately showed us each step of the process. A montage that showed Nacho changing the powder in the pills, closing them again, and practicing his throwing was shown earlier in the episode. He throws the bottle in the jacket again and again, but fails to do so, and before we know it, it's morning. We are never shown how long Nacho practiced for, and if he ever did manage to successfully throw the pills into their pocket. This memory of him failing lingers at the back of the audience's mind when the time for the actual execution arrives. In conclusion, the attention to detail to all of these aspects made something trivial into something that can put people on the edge of their seat. I understand that the action genre and drama genre have different roles to fulfill, but I feel if it's possible to have small stakes create such tension, blockbuster action flicks with world-ending stakes and the spectacle of mass destruction would mean even more when similar techniques are applied. Thank you for watching and if you made it this far in the video, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon. Let me know which Better Call Saul scenes kept you on the edge of your seat in the comments. Until next time.